you a fan of this podcast? Do you wish there was even more juicy content for you to sink your ears into? Well, there is. You can become a premium member of this podcast for $5.99 a month and get full access to an archive of over 50 bonus episodes. Additionally, we release a bonus episode every single month. That's a ton of extra content, including my personal interior design diaries, extra tips, my talking about trends, and so much more. Additionally, you'll be keeping us on the airwaves each and every week because your premium membership money goes directly back to making this podcast amazing. Check us out at affordableinteriordesign.com, click on podcast to learn more and to become a premium member today. need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look be your own interior designer this is affordable interior design the podcast here's your host betsy Hellman. hello for those of you watching on youtube you can see that i'm dressed unusually casually today and the reason is because well, this is the way I always dress when I'm not recording a podcast or meeting with clients, but also I'm feeling really good. Most of my energy is back. I'm rarely feeling sick due to my pregnancy and it is spring and Connecticut is gorgeous in the springtime. It's beautiful in the winter, amazing in the fall. I haven't been here for a summer yet, but spring wow. There's so many flowers, so much to see. I'm out on all the different nature trails and trying to get, well, I can't get 10,000 steps because then I'm just worn out for the rest of the day. But I've been trying hard for 7,000 steps. Um, Carrying this extra person around with me everywhere is uh, making things a little bit more difficult. But um, I'm just loving it. I'm out there loving it. The other thing you can see if you're on YouTube is that I do have a little glare issue. I have this amazing Our House chandelier. I just love it. It's so beautiful. It's the priciest thing I own besides my car. Yeah, yeah, I did a splurge. Um, But it is creating some unfortunate glare. So I'm going to get working on that with some lighting in the old cottage. But, uh, But I've been outside too much to worry about that right now. What are you worried about right now? I'm happy to see that our mailbag is once again uh, filling up and questions are coming in. Maybe you're working on your spring projects. Maybe you're getting ready for summer entertaining. I don't know, but it's giving me lots of fodder for this podcast. Now, of course, I love digging into your questions. I love working with my clients. Tomorrow I'll be in Briarcliff Manor and then I'm heading down to Scarsdale, New York. A busy day. Then on Friday, I'll be in New York City, uh, my favorite place to design. I'm a little bit biased, but uh, yeah. But the other thing I'm working on is this creative project that's been bubbling in the back of my mind uh, on Simmer for years. For, I don't know, maybe a decade ago, I bought the URL thinking one day this is something I'm going to do but it's not quite time right now. Well, I've determined that it's time right now, and I'm working on a book of personal essays about my interior design career, my journey, the highs and lows. Uh, You know, I've been in the design business for 18 years now, and I've been podcasting for eight years, and... um, So you guys have heard a lot of my journey if you've been listening since the beginning or if you went back and caught up, but there's so much more to tell. And I felt like my story could be perhaps inspiring, perhaps entertaining, perhaps elucidating. And I really want with not only my book, but also my podcast and my business to disrupt the interior design industry. There's more than one way 
to do interior design. There's more than one way to become an interior designer, and there's more than one way to run your business, take clients, you know, manifest your dreams. And I hope that you're getting a sense of that through this show, but I want to go even a little bit deeper. I want to just um, share some things. I've been keeping a diary on the regular since I was seven years old. So uh, I have all these stories and mishaps and adventures logged, but this book is really going to focus on my interior design path. So are there things you've been wondering about my path? You know, as I'm creating this book, I'm thinking that you listeners are sort of the ideal reader for this. Somebody who's interested in interior design, someone who likes to hear about my ideas and opinions and journey. Uh, So maybe there's a piece of the puzzle in terms of my story that you're missing. Maybe there's something you've always wanted to know more about. Well, if that's the case, I'd love for you to write to me personally. So you can write to Betsy, B-E-T-S-Y, at affordableinteriordesign.com. Once again, that's Betsy, B-E-T-S-Y, at affordableinteriordesign.com. And send me what you'd like to read about, because right now I'm outlining the whole book, laying out the chapters. I'm taking a writing workshop about personal essays, and um, I'm really excited where it's going, but it's at its nascent stages, and there's plenty of room for input. So please share with me uh, what would be inspiring for you. All right. Uh, Without further ado, let me get to my questions in my mailbag. I'm so excited to dig in this week. The first question is coming from Monica, and Monica's writing all the way from Canada. She writes, hi, Betsy. Thank you for all that you do. My husband and I love your podcast and your clear, affordable approach to design. Our style words are peaceful, contemporary, and sophisticated, of course. Our colors are white, wall color, Benjamin Moore's Chantilly Lace, mid-tone wood, honey beige, oak floor, and blue, which is a sofa cover. I know that that is against your rules, but we eat on the sofa. I'm using silver metals and some greenia in Drexenia plants. We learned about them from your books. What do you recommend as a window treatment for a 60s house with a vaulted ceiling and wall-to-wall windows in an L-shaped living dining area? I loathe the beige drapes that came with the house, and we would love white Venetian blinds. As you have suggested in your book, I read them all. But I can't afford them because they are over $2,500 plus tax. Would Ikea roller blinds do or vertical blinds from Beauclair? I know they're on your rest list and not best list. We tried out Ikea's white curtains with the grommets last year, but they looked too billowy and took up too much space. This is a small, awkward living dining space because of the L shape. I have to limit the budget to $500 Canadian. I have scoured many thrift stores to no avail. These hideous curtains have been driving me bonkers for four years. Please help your fan, Monica. Monica, you did such a good job of describing your style. It's obvious that you've been reading my books. One feeling word, one style word, and of course, sophisticated. Before I can give you advice on your window treatment, I do need to call something out. You mentioned that your colors are white, mid-tone wood, and blue. Now, white is not a color. White in color theory is actually the absence of color. And mid-tone wood is not a color. It is the type of wood you've chosen. So you have selected your family of wood tones, which I'm very excited about. But the only color that you've listed that is truly making a color palette is blue. Because remember, your color palette needs three Roy G. Biv colors. You're asking, Betsy, what's Roy G. Biv? That is the abbreviation for the colors found in the rainbow, right? So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So you need to pick three of those colors as your color palette. Do not cop out with white. Uh, Mid-tone wood is not a color. It is your wood family. 
So yes, you do have this wonderful mid-century modern home and you have this really long wall of windows. And on the wall of windows, you've got these bulky beige drapes that are ill-fitting because they're puddling on the floor probably about three inches. And as longtime listeners know, we only want a one-inch puddle, but ideally we want those drapes to just skim the floor. And the other thing that's problematic for me is that these drapes are individually um, drawn so that it's a series of panels. It looks like eight different panels. And the reason why you can't sew them all together is because you need these centralized stability brackets. You have one, two, three stability brackets inside the mount of the larger rod with the two brackets on each end. That's five brackets total. And of course, the drapery can't go past those brackets, so it's bound. Now, anything that you choose to do here, whether it's the IKEA panels or something else, I'm going to tell you is going to look bad as well. This window, really, because of its extreme length, uh, because of its extreme width, not only do they go floor to ceiling, but they also go side to side, really needs a customized treatment. If you own this space, if you plan on being here more than seven years, it would be worth the investment to keep these hideous beige blinds for right now and save up and do something that's really meant for this window. I would hire a custom company. I would think about doing something automated so that way, um, you know, you don't have to constantly pull these back and forth if it is something you're drawing every day. Because that's just a lot of physical labor. And I think there's also going to be much sleeker solutions. But the problem you're going to face if you repeat any sort of drape or even with those panels is you are going to need that center stability bracket situation, which is going to cause you to have drapery or panels breaking up this beautiful, expansive view. And to me, that's the big offensive issue here, is that this panoramic view is broken up because of the brackets, which is why if you do something custom, say it's on a track or something like this, it doesn't have to ever stop in the middle. It can go all the way side to side and you get that beautiful, full, uninterrupted view. So I know, Monica, that that's not the answer that you want. You're probably just as chagrined as when I told you earlier, you need two more colors to make a color palette. But I'm not in the business of giving you just band-aids because I want the next thing that you do to be the right thing. And unfortunately, when you do have such a fabulous space with such a particular type of view, you need to treat it with reverence. You need to treat it in a way that's as special as the windows are. So a lot of people move into spaces and, um, you know, they picked the space for these unique windows or for this unique architecture, but then they don't want to have to pony up and actually deal with what that means. And in this case, Monica, I want you to pony up. So save up so that you can afford to get a custom company out here and see what your options are. And it's going to make a world of difference. All right, there we go. You know, I want to throw one other thing out here that might be controversial. Say you want something in the meantime. Say you really don't want to wait. The other thing that you could explore that would be temporary, super affordable, and give you a really clean look is something that we do a lot in the city when we have windows that kind of face another building. Say you're on the 34th floor and it's really hard to treat this window, but, um, you're facing another neighbor or it's hard to get that privacy, is you could do the privacy film. So when you're inside the house, you can completely see through. 
But when you're outside the house, it has kind of a mirrored or reflective quality and you cannot see in. Now, that's not going to be a gorgeous, sophisticated, long-term solution. But the thing I like about that is it gives you time to save up for that proper window treatment. It allows you to have privacy without having these bulky, chunky, beige atrocities. And um, it's very affordable. So you can just peel off this film when you have the appropriate window treatment. I think that could be a really good way to go. And it's something for you to consider that certainly fits within your budget. In fact, it's well below. All right. Thanks for writing in, Monica. And now it's time for a quick commercial break. Do you love this podcast? Do you wish you could learn even more? Well, we have an online class bundle. Our online class bundle is comprised of three online classes, Beautifying Your Home for Less, Styling Your Home, and The Fundamentals of Feng Shui. Each one of those three classes is between 30 and 45 minutes long and chock filled with visuals and tips, things that will help you to style your own space or help out with other spaces. Additionally, with the pack of three classes, you get an autographed copy of my book, Affordable Interior Design. You get all of that for only $99. Once again, that's the three online classes as well as the book for only $99. You just go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to buy your bundle today. And if one of those classes sounded intriguing, but maybe you already have my book or some of the other topics are not of interest, you can buy the classes individually at that site as well. Each class is $40. So head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to get your bundle or your online class today. My next question for today comes from Stephanie. Stephanie is writing from Nashville, Tennessee. She writes, hi, Betsy, congratulations on your pregnancy. I am due myself this summer, and I'm working hard to get our newish home furnished before our baby arrives. I have a question about our living room. We just received our new crate and barrel sofa with chaise, which was the last major furniture purchase for the room. I'm trying to figure out whether the sofa should be pulled off the wall like it is in the attached photos, and whether we should add a sofa table behind it for lamps or a place to put drinks. Someone at Crate and Barrel recommended that I do this, as the room is quite deep, so it looked a bit odd against the back wall, as it was so far from the TV. I also like it, because if we had it against the wall, the rug would have to move back, and there would be a huge space of wood between the end of the rug and the TV. What do you think? The couch is as is, and a sofa table, or move the sofa back against the wall. What are the rules for how long the sofa table needs to be behind the couch? The couch is large at 112 inches. My second question is your advice on how to style the blank white wall above the couch. I have several pieces of artwork and photos in natural wood and gold frames that I was envisioning putting here. I don't think a mirror would look great as it would reflect the TV opposite it. Should I get a floating shelf to line the photos? If we go the sofa table route, I would also plan to have two table lamps flanking the couch. Thank you for your guidance and for your help. I hope you start to feel better ASAP. Well, thankfully, Stephanie, I am feeling so much better. I was thinking about it. I think the percentage of how I'm feeling, I think I'm at 85%, my normal Betsy self. And that's really good because I was at 25%. I was, okay, I was at five, maybe 15% my normal Betsy self just months ago. I basically was just laying on the day bed in my cottage, um, hoping that people didn't want to do meetings on Zoom because I looked as bad as I sounded and felt. But I'm sitting upright. I'm smiling. I'm enjoying nature. The timing was absolutely perfect. Okay, let's dig into your pictures. Let's see here. So yes, you do have a nice deep room. I can't exactly size it up, but I'm going to imagine this rug is like an 8 by 10 just based on my experiences. And so I bet this room is about 14 feet deep, which isn't huge, but it's not small. You know, the only reason I would use a sofa table in this particular room 
is if there was space to walk behind. Because otherwise, you're really just bumping this sofa up. 12 to 24 inches. And I don't think that's really doing much. It's creating this awkward kind of space behind. Additionally, you know, sofa table with lamps is a really nice look in a magazine. It's a really nice look in some homes. The problem, especially with a little one running around, is that you're going to have cords going from the lamps to typically a wall outlet. Not many of us have outlets in the floor. And even if we do, they're oftentimes cut or covered, excuse me, by the rug. And do we want to cut the rug to access that? Question mark. We need to be very careful with fire codes and electricity and having layers of fabric over an outlet that's being used with a plug in it. So sometimes the lamps on the sofa table are not the most practical solution. And in this case, we would be seeing a cord or cords leading to an outlet because you would just have this sofa so close to the wall. If you moved it much closer to the TV, say two or three additional feet closer, it would look a little odd. Uh, You're right on the cusp for me of moving this in. And my answer is no. What I think you should do is get a bigger TV. I think this TV is way too small for the space uh, because you want to take a measurement from where your eyeballs are to where the TV screen is. And that number in inches divided by two is the size of your TV. Now, you don't have to be super literal because if we were to think about doing that with, say, a 14-foot deep space, that would mean that we would need a 77-inch TV, something around there, and that's gigantic. But I would definitely do a 65-inch for sure, and I think it would help to make the room feel much more proportional. The other thing that I think would help is moving this rug slightly so that it's less under the couch. You know, it only needs to be just a few inches fully under the front leg of the sofa. So I'm not speaking about the chaise leg, but that core sofa piece, um, it just needs to be about three inches under that. And then what I think would help this room to feel more um, pulled together and more well utilized is to move the two armchairs that you have perpendicular to the sofa right now, instead to move them opposite the sofa. So kind of flanking the TV stand, but at an angle. I think that could look really nice. I think it could help to fill the space because right now what you're not doing is you're not appropriately filling the space. Do I think you bought the wrong size rug? Yes. I think you probably should have gone for a 9 by 12 or just whatever's the one step bigger. As you know, I'm guesstimating with all of this. Um, So I wish you would have gone with the 9 by 12, but uh, I think that just moving these chairs and kind of giving the room more purpose all around versus sort of having all the seating on the one corner of the room and having the other corner be sort of open and empty, for me, I think that would create better balance and help to utilize the space better. Then you're asking me, Betsy, what would you put perpendicular to the sofa to fill that gap? Uh, And it's in between two windows. And I could see like a really cool bookcase or etagere there that has some stuff that you could style um, that would give that space some intention. Uh, I could also see a case good like a um, three and a half to four foot high bar cabinet with then a beautiful circular mirror above it because there are two windows on that wall. Excuse me. I'm hesitant to put something rectangular there without some kind of curve. So say I did go for the etagere or that bookcase, I might do one that has an arched top rather than a straight top. Right now you've put two pieces of art in between the two windows. And the problem for me is that it's Noah's Ark, right? Two sets of two and they're both vertical rectangles. It's not working for me. I really like the idea of doing some kind of gallery wall above the sofa, especially now that we know that the sofa is going to be, you know, 
I don't like any piece of furniture truly pushed up against the wall unless it is something like a bookcase because we do want to anchor that bookcase, especially with a baby coming. But I like a sofa to be three to five inches off the wall anyway. We need room for good chi to circulate. We don't want it to look like our furniture is pushed against things tightly. But I think a beautiful gallery wall would just be so compelling. Also, the wall that has the windows, you've painted this really beautiful deep navy color. And the other walls are a stark white that's almost the same as the trim color. For me, it looks like an accident wall. You guys know what I'm talking about, especially Monica, who's read my book. But the accident wall refers to the fact that you've done one wall as an accent wall, but it doesn't look purposeful. It doesn't look complete. Instead, it's making the room look like you ran out of navy paint. And I think because the rug is so light in color, the wood tones are so light in color, and the couch itself is a really light gray. And then you have, of course, a ton of white ceiling. You have light colored floors. You have white trim. You have white blinds. I think making the entire room navy, even though I can only see three of the walls, not four, the three of the walls that I can see, it would just have a huge impact, especially with those light colored frames, the gold and light wood. I'm really loving the idea that you would go for, go for, I was going to say go for the gold because I was just talking about gold frames, but you would go for the navy and just do it. Make this bold choice because I also think that having this really saturated dark color will make this open, vacuous, kind of cold and empty room feel more cozy, uh, feel more sort of um, encased in color and kind of make the walls close in on you a bit so that it feels like a more comforting, um, homey space. There you go, Stephanie. You got a lot more than you bargained for. That's what happens, guys, when you write to me with your questions. So don't hesitate. Please do write to me with your questions. You just go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. Once again, that's affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. There you'll see a form to fill out with one of your questions. Feel free to attach pictures. Guys, if you want to see Stephanie's pictures, if you want to see Monica's pictures, as you know, all of this is also recorded on YouTube. So you can head over to YouTube and check out my very casual attire, check out all those pictures, uh, and there you go. You get sort of a more complete experience. It's not just audio. You also get the visual. Guys, it's been so great to be back with you again. I look forward to seeing even more questions, helping with more design dilemmas, and being right back here again next week. Until then, bye. You've asked for it, and we have answered the call. For years, you've been saying, Betsy, You're talking about all these great design concepts, but we can't visualize them. You're describing the picture that the listener sent in of their problem, and we wish we could see that picture too. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I do my best to describe them, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And that's why Affordable Interior Design, the podcast, now has a YouTube channel. Not only do we have a YouTube channel where you could see recordings and clips of these podcast episodes, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and so many other exciting things. You should check it out. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash L-I-N-K-S links. And when you go there, you will see links to our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and more. Please check it out, follow and subscribe so you can see everything I'm talking about. A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com.
If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.